in today's competitive world when life is so complex and complicated only way of success is regular upgradation and hard work there is definitely a success stories of people and business but how did they all succeed not by sheer magic it is all because you know going into the deeper and deeper of technology i think welcome viewers this is a very thought provoking session which we are talking today and the title is digital technologies and teaching learning in higher educations this is the third batch i think in our preceding two sessions we have we have listened our honorable vice chancellor professor nageshwar rao sir and the coordinator professor santosh panda ji and various other luminaries and experts who are you know working in this direction so this was a topic which was you know already covered in varieties of places but what we are talking today is more you know talking about out of box approach and how there is a technology interface there is a technology interaction with the with the education vis a vis you know the national education policy i am professor subodh kishorwani director center of online education and uh, with us you know professor nayantara pali she is a professor in management in school of management studies she is a expert in hr and had done a lot of work related to you know technology enabled learning and how the technology is going to put it wear boots in academia in in the in the corporate and how there is a linkage between the technology and the corporate i think this is something which is going to play a very important role prior to going into the depth of this this topic i just want to throw a light on this term because if you go into the title you find out that that the terms are very powerful and when we bifurcate this particular term i think uh, this is bifurcated into three four uh, subjects and which is itself you know very powerful like digital technology teaching learning higher education nep 2020 i think we we all know that how the digital india campaign was started by the government of india and and it's a great initiative which the government had taken which had put its wear boots not in corporate world but in academia as a whole and as far as you know the teaching is concerned i think this is a very important aspect and definitely this is definitely going to add a feather in a cap technology is something which is changing with the change of time there was a time when technology was just you know merely a computer or you know the simple hardware but with the change of time we have seen that how the technology had changed themselves and when we talk in in a in a in a educational perspective i think this is something where uh, it's a need of an hour and technology is something which is definitely going to win win as far as the learners are concerned as far as the educators are concerned as far as you know the the institutions like indira gandhi national open university is concerned because we have started in 1985 with with a very uh, small programs but after certain time you see how we have cater you know the 35 uh, lakh students this is all because you know the technology is with us and the way we have moved from brick and mortar system to click and mortar system i think there is a great role of technology because ignu have shifted its education from offline to online and online education is something which is which changing with the change of time and with the latest trends which are which are knocking the door i think this is something which is definitely going to make the things in a more smarter stage teaching is something which is changing pedagogy had changed and we have seen that how the national education policy talks about you know the four components the first talk the first component talks about the school education then we have higher education then there are certain you know the enablers which are adding a feather in a cap like artificial intelligence machine learning lifelong learning is something which is there because when we talk about learning i think there we have to see that the perpetual learning had coming up and learning is something which which is changing with the change of time there was a time when we talk about learning only but right now we talk about learn unlearn and relearn so this relearning is is coming up where we we mug up many things then we change ourselves then we come up with a different thought and then finally you see how the things are going to be changed with this lifelong learning model so this is something which is part and parcel of nep 2020 and then higher education is something which is very important because as a university as a indira gandhi national open university i think we cater a huge number of student and higher education is something which is changing and we more talk about you know the gdgr skillings and other things and gradually we will talk about how the technology is going to put its wear boots in this direction so uh, if you see the verdict of our honorable prime minister i think um, the the he talks about atmanirbhar bharat and making education more flexible affordable inclusive and equitable for all so 
building capacities for teacher and institutions i think this is this is coming up reorienting reimagining and revamping curriculum is something which is also changing with the change of time and there we have seen that that the syllabi and curriculum is have a have a great impact as far as the technology is concerned because when the technology enters in the syllabi i think uh, th there we can have a great approach so this is something which all talks about certain things and in our uh, uh, you know forthcoming slides we are we are going to talk all those aspects from underneath to clinical that how the government is working in this direction how the higher education is changing because because we are more talking about emphasize more on the credits and the credits for that the academic bank of credit had come up we will see that how this academic bank of credit and how the massive open online course where the open learning um, platform come up which had you know uh, shifted from the restricted access to open access so this is something which is which is going on and there are certain omnipresent facts which are which are which are there because shift is there the education had been shifted from brick and mortar system to click and mortar system we have seen that how the greenfield education had been replaced by you know the brownfield education so when we talk about the greenfield education i think we talk about the playgrounds we talk about you know the face to face education the classrooms and uh, and when you talk about you know the green uh, brownfield education i think you talk about you know the brown chairs or the tables or the laptops or the gadgets which are you know equipped with that and then the entire education system is changing the learning management system which we are going to talk in our forthcoming slides uh, about that it's it's definitely going to work in this direction and then moving from pnp mode to various softwares we have seen that there was a way when the pen and paper mode was was there but with the change of time you have seen that how the cbt model had come up that is computer based uh, phenomena had come up so pen and paper which was purely a brick and mortar approach is now replaced by the click and mortar approach so softwares which i have talked about you know the learning management system or the content management system or the various softwares which are working as a enabler as far as the learning is concerned this is uh, going to be play a very important role and examinations because when you talk about you know the the learning i think the learning had been transferred into the four quadrant the first quadrant talks about you know the self learning material then you have uh, the the second component which talk about multimedia and then you have interaction and fourth is the assessment so this is all about so the proctored examination is also one of the important component and we have seen that how the proctored exams are going to be conducted and where there is a great role so if you talk about you know the online education i think online education starts from you know uh, the admission and the examination so so the university like indira gandhi national open university is playing a very important role as far as you know uh, the the enrollments are concerned as far as you know the examinations are concerned so starting from underneath and to pinnacle we have uh, purely you know the online mode of learning the things so mooc tablets and other things are there and we have seen that how the contemporary technologies like internet of thing artificial intelligence blockchain deep learning machine learning augmented reality and virtual reality are bringing a shift in the education immersive learning had come up and uh, learning is not changing with the change of time so there was more restrictions in the learning but now you have seen that we are more talking about the open open and free way of learning so learning is now uh, reached to all and uh, and the university like you know is working in this direction in a big way so social media is going to play a very important role then we have seen that how we have come out from the pandemic and how the post pandemic was there then pre pandemic was there and then how the teachers have changed themselves and and to align with the learners so this was something which was very important and this is something which is going to play a very important role i think uh, uh, since i have given a curtain result what exactly you know this digital digitization is there so i think uh, uh, we have we have talked about that how the digitization how the learning is changing and this is a three tier approach i think this is a very old phenomena when from the from the inception stage from the either we talk about you know the paleolithic age or the neolithic age or you know the learning stage the institution is there as as a one pillar then educators are there then learners are there so and they have a very important role i think indira gandhi national open university which was formulated in 1985 
emphasize more on the three tier approach of learning so this three tier is something which you talk in a igloo perspective i think the headquarters are there then you have regional centers and the learner support centers so here also the pedagogy could be more like that it's a old phenomena i think the learning and the you know the way of teaching is there which is changing with the change of time but the genesis behind the learning the you know the grassroots if you talk about you know the the basic root is same so institution is something which is in a in a what in a in a uh, what we can say in a in a visual shape then educators are also there it can be converted into e tutors and then learners are there there was a time when learners were restricted but right now what we have seen that learners are are placed in various places but the educators are working as enablers working as the facilitators and bridging the gap between the institutions and the learners so and how this this gap is going to bridge, bridge with the help of certain technologies and technology is something which is which is which work as a very important component because when you talk about technology you talk about you know how the how it is going to be facilitated how it is going to be reached to the learner so this is something this is one of the you know examples of learner man, learning management system which which uh, ignu had developed as a institutions and this purely you know talk about the uh, click and mode of examinations where online admissions are there and then finally you know the the exams are conducted in a proctored mode either it could be the center proctored or remote proctored and then learners are are getting that uh, degree that at the door step with the help of blockchain technologies so we we admit the learners in online mode and and you know take the examination and exit the learners through that mode so this is something which is which is which is very important component which 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 indira gandhi national open university had started and uh, this is uh, this is something which which is across the board you know initiated by majorities of institutions so the blended learning model had come up and we have seen that we are we are moving towards the hybrid age and hybrid learning is is more talking about the the combination of you know the blended learning and other aspects so this is something which is which is going to be going to play a very important role and educators are uh, are 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 some somewhere changing with the change of time and you see how the educators are more techno savvy they are more acquainted with the with the latest trends latest you know the way of thing is there i have talked about you know the various pedagogy the teaching pedagogy had been changed the national education policy if you see the you know the point number 23 and 24 which emphasize more on technology enabled learning and the uh, tools which are going to be used it had talked about you know the how the educators are going to be change themselves because there was a time you know when since we are a management professors and we know that you know in management there is a very powerful term called push approach and pull approach if you talk about you know the uh pull approach i think uh, push approach is quite you know the the institutional centric supply centric where you are making a syllabi you are making a curriculum then learners are bound to go for that particular cur- uh, curriculum and then they have no choice they have to choose from that particular basket but when you have a pull approach i think pull approach is more learner centric more user centric and you are giving privilege to the learners to to decide their syllabi decide their curriculum so the huge number of baskets are there the you know the credit system which with the ministry have taken initiatives i think uh, we are having a fruitful discussion on that also it talks about you know academic bank of credit where uh, as far as enrolling in a particular program i think credit plays a very important role and if you achieve particular credit to get a masters degree or the ug degree i think somewhere you know you have win the uh, win the battle and the learners are, are in a very very prominent stage once they achieve that a uh, particular credit they can convert it into a degree programs or a diploma programs or certificate program so this is something which is changing with the change of time and learners i have talked about i think the organic learning have come up and you have seen that that uh, learning is is now something which is which, which change with the change of time and uh, there were uh, uh, as we talk about you know why we are talking about the organic kind of thing and in as far as our food habits are concerned as far as you know the different way of thing is in day to day activity we are more talking about organics so learning is also more organic in nature they are we have to see because a lot of sources are there which are which are you know available in various chunks but when you go deeply into it you found out that some are useful some are you know authentic some are not authentic so when you talk about organic learning i think we have to see this kind of approach because learning is not changing with the change of time there was a time when you restrict to only books and journals but with the change of time you have seen that that the learning is also changing and this learning had changed 
due to this uh, you know the approach which is coming up and learner centric approach which i have talked about that collaborative learning as far as the virtual and online learning environments are there and uh, the teamwork model is coming up so learners tend to go together imbibing and building knowledge and idea of collaborative learning had come up so collaborative learning is like that say the educators have developed a video and these videos are now confined to the bona fide student of particular group but it is going to be shared to the various learners who want that for that this openness another model which ministry have taken initiative i think madam will throw a light on that how the national uh, mission of education through information communication technology talks about the various components so this is something which is there in real time collaboration is coming up so without wasting time the things could be more dynamic in nature and uh, say the lecture lectures which are broadcasted by 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 the by the gamut of people by the by the teachers in a very short span you find out that the live lectures are available in real time mode in a in a in a social networking platforms either it could be the facebook instagram youtube or or you know the twitter so this is a way by which the things are going on and digital transformation which i am talking about is just about change and the change is no doubt sometimes good sometimes bad and we have to see that how the change will come up because changing only the devices or you know the pedagogy does not matter but i think somewhere you have to change the mindset and when you are going to change the mindset i think it has to apply in totality only the mindset of the educators or the institutions not only occurs but the teachers but the uh, learners also have to change their mindset so optimizing approach the uh, matters a lot and uh, how we are going to revolutionize the traditional teaching and learning process and then robust technology infrastructure is important so when we are talking about you know technological change i think somewhere we have to change many things from underneath to pinnacle it's not about you know changing the changing the devices or the or the or the softwares or the hardwares but we have to change many aspect about that so this is something we have seen that if you see this particular image we have seen that how the digitization is converted into digitalization and then digital transformation is coming up so electronic learning is is changing with the change of time and and student experience are also going to be imbibed and incorporated so these are the changes which is there and uh, i think uh, there are certain benefits of digital technology digital technology introduces scopes and the blended model is coming up electronic learning for higher education is changing and there are multiple ways to communicate learn correspond cooperate and collaborate so this is the beauty of the digital technology because digital technology talks about the collaborative learning the, the teamwork approach and the other approach i think uh, i have given you know the curtain laser to what exactly the digital technology yeah. is and so, how the how the technology is changing with the with the change of time and the shelf life of the technology is very less there was a time when when uh, when we talk, if we talk in a company perspective the companies you know we have seen that dominated the world market for a for a longer span they they there for four decades five decades but after certain time you see that how things are going to be changed with the change of time and uh, keeping in mind i think uh, the the initiatives which are which are there there are lot of initiatives which the government had taken i think uh, uh, before transferring to uh, professor nayan tarapali i just uh, throw a light that since because the madam is going to talk more about you know the various aspects i think lot of initiatives which are coming and day to day it is it is changing ministry is very particular about that that the in, the initiatives in a, in a technological manner is going to benefit the society by and large by the 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 learners who are scattered who are you know so so learning is not confined that only learn they can earn and learn both so skilling is also very important and national digital university if you talk about i think is a is a great initiative which had been coined maybe year back by the by the finance minister and and in a in a coming days in a coming months you find out this is going to establish with a with a with a good intention behind that and it talks about you know the personalized learning experience learning at the doorstep and uh, and you know within you know the indian languages so cutting edge ict expertise is there hub and hub spoke model is coming up so when you more talk about you know hub spoke model i think you you see that uh, this is something which is there where where you see that uh, if i take example of indira gandhi national open university which work as a hub and there are various nodes like the regional centers and these regional centers are linked with that so so this is a model which is there this is these are the old pedagogies which are there but with the help of technology 
the more things are going to come. So anyway, I think uh, 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 we see that how the, the credit is going to come. Madam is going to talk more about the particular aspect. And then certain digi lockers, we know that how, the, how these changes are going to come up. And uh, I think uh, we have given a curtain razor to yeah. Alana. Uh, uh, hmm. Professor Subodh has very clearly mentioned about, the, he has set a context that what is digital learning, how the uh, technology is changing and what is the role of digital technology in higher, higher education context. Now, uh, as uh, all of us are in a session of NEP uh, professional development program, so it, it, it matters a lot to connect the NEP 2020 with the technology in higher education. So the uh, chapter 23 and 24 of the Nas national education policy says about the use of technology and online education. And uh, in your screen, you can see these are the four aspects how technology can be used in higher education. Right. So technology is used from the very beginning in different formats. It's not new for any one of us, maybe for the educator or for, for as a general public also for learners also. But how we are leveraging the utility of technology for providing education, imparting the uh, accurate um, learning management style and how you how we utilize the latest technologies for that that is one of the main scope of uh, NEP 2020 then how to uh, make use of the technology is by if only when we design the digital technology of higher education when we make a proper uh, 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 tool uh, structure and how what are the tools we are going to use and what will be the proce procedure of uses if we if we design it carefully then technology is of great importance as per the NEP 2020. Then the there are many infrastructure available and technology as Professor Subodh was very much right saying that technology changes every minute every second there is some new technology coming up. But how to integrate that and how to choose the proper selection of the technology and the available digital platforms to provide right uh, teaching learning to the learners. So that is also one of the major aspect of NEP 2020 that is optimum utilization of existing digital platforms ongoing ICT based educational initiatives to meet the current needs and the future challenges. Then how to use the technology for online and digital education, keeping in view the quality, equity and inclusiveness. These, these three things are very important in any aspect of education, that what we are teaching should be of high quality, it should have an equitable distribution and it should be inclusive. All sectors of the society should be benefited from the uh, teaching learning process. So technology is going to def definitely going to play a major role in all the aspects. So uh, what, uh, what the trend is right now that we have seen that there are certain changes in the society is coming up and the learners are, are having a, you know, flamboyant in their mind that uh, whether they go for uh, this online because accreditation is also matters and uh, sometimes what happens they are you know comparing the two two courses two yep. programs which are offered by the by the institution so the uh, the uh, fact is there are many options available now hmm. so like earlier we only used to think that uh, conventional system face to face teaching is reliable and or more authentic than online teaching and uh, technology based teaching but uh, pandemic has given us a uh, is a clue that technology can play a major role in absence of face to face teaching while a teacher is also present teacher a role of a teacher will never subsume how much technology we imbibe but it is the role of teacher what kind of technology can be used mm -hmm and what kind of teaching learning process we are going to implement and moreover with the coming uh, digital technologies are being more authenticated 
uh, in India, UGC is uh, now comparing, uh, there is no distinction between online teaching and conventional teaching and blended teaching. So it is becoming more authentic, more institutionalized and it, it, it has become a reliable source of learning. No, no one thing I want to uh, know from your end, like uh, don't you think uh, the flexibility is not given to the learners but to the teachers also? So, so as far technology as plays a, a teacher a role uh, in teaching a teacher also and a learner also. Very true. So technology is a teacher for both teacher and learners. So even even uh, as I have talked about that uh, the learners have got the full flexibility to choose from the basket right. that what kind of you know the specialization they are interested in and what type of courses they want. On the other hand, it is giving full flexibility to the teachers that they can design you know the the course as per their interest. Yeah. And these courses are you know if teachers are having an interest in the particular course, they can you know disseminate the the learning in a more. So if uh, you can see in the yes. sli uh, slide that. Uh, Technology has got many advantages. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the basic advantage of uh, for a educator is it empowers a educator with many many varieties of technology, many varieties of uh, teaching learning. The teacher always tries to find the best possible way to teach the learners. They always innovate something. We as teachers always uh, innovate something to teach something new, to teach something uh, interesting. So technology plays a major role in providing information uh, across the world and which empowers an educator with so much information that they can very easily change the pattern. They can yes, very yes. Uh, quickly update themselves with many information. So that is an added advantage for an educator. And one more thing, I think uh, the uh, the four, you know, the bullet which you have talked about yeah. and the third bullet is besides more on helps educators to create blended learning environment. So, so as far as, you know, the learning is concerned, I think we have a face to face learning, which is, you know, a conventional way of learning, whereas uh, if you talk about electronic learning and now the blended learning is coming up. So, so educators are having a privilege to have a blended learning approach with them. It's not like that. Uh -huh. you know, we don't think that online ho jayega, technology use karne se face to face completely eradicate. Ho uh -huh. No, it will always be there. So teacher uses different uh, platforms. So what will it be? You get different avenues to teach and the learners, they get different aspects of the particular subject or of different topics. So, mm -hmm. while the face-to-face uh, -face teaching is going on, we can supplement different varieties of other teaching methods, other Very learning true. methods by using the appropriate technology. I think uh, the term which you have used, the uh, supplement, is a very important term because the four quadrant which we talk about, I think the, the first quadrant which is the text material, the self-learning material, and then you have multimedia and then assessment and then interaction. So, and then examination obviously the four, yeah. four quadrant is there so, so the, the, these four things are completely either you depend fully on technology or use technology as a supplementary resource for doing all these activities so right. technology is going to is an add on value to our teaching learning process it it a, a teacher will can never be substituted completely by technology it is just going to add value to our teaching profession. So that is the biggest advantage of uh, accepting technology as a supplementary resources. We should not think that it is going to replace our teaching profile. No, not at all. A teacher only decides what to teach, which technology to use, which platform to use. So it gives us an arena of different platforms mm -hmm. available. So teacher is primary. Learner centric is our for the every teacher's prime approach. Technology mm -hmm. is just a medium. It cannot replace, but it is an add-on value to the teaching learning process. Right. So uh, there are many benefits of technology in a classroom as a face-to-face -face teacher. We can use technology to create an engaged learning environment. We can so like in management, uh, we use different case studies, we use simulation techniques, we saw different contextualized examples using 
uh, earlier you used to have PowerPoint presentation slides, etc. But now we can use any medium, anything like we can show in a YouTube video, we can show a TED talk, we can uh, just play a podcast also. Right. So just by uh, talking for, instead of talking for 45 minutes session, if we just allow others to listen to different varieties of uh, um, uh, medium, then that is more engaging uh, than only just by talking because there are many freely available sources with what we call as open educational resources which any teacher can use to impart teaching learning. Then it prepares for the students for the future also because it always grabs attention of the latest up, uh, knowledge, uh, skills and attitudes required for the uh, new workforce. So the, uh, the students, they come, they themselves can come prepared because it is uh, information is available, dearth of information is available to them mm -hmm. through technology. So it, it, uh, it also prepares them for their future employability. Then the best part of this is they are, they, uh, there is an, always an importance of connectivity between a teacher and a learner and a learner and a learner. The peer connectivity is very much vital to uh, survive in this dynamic uh, environment. So by using different technology, uh, social media is one of them. So we are connected not only for our social uh, life but also for knowledge sharing. Yes. Then it boosts collaboration when we connect, when we are connected, we, we do different things collaborative. No one can exist uh, in a singular uh, status, like we cannot do any work in an office of our own. We have to do it in a teamwork. So collaboration is very important. And then uh, there are many technological uh, to technology tools which boost collaboration. And I think what you talked about that uh, the, the interaction is uh, quite agile as far as the learner to learner is concerned, as far as learner to instructor is concerned. Right. So in face to face education what we have seen that, that uh, the model is like the modus operandi is that the learners are interacting in the, in the classroom but, the, but they have certain you know constraint as far as right. the time is concerned. But here you have got, you know, the interaction in a 24 into 7 mode, in a real time mode also. So the learners can interact, you know, during the sessions which are going on, as well as what you have talked about, there are certain, you know, the the way, either podcast or, or you know, the short videos or the TED real time talks, yeah. TED talks are there. So on the other hand, the interactivity is going on. Right. So in the initial stage, you know, when, when, this, when this contemporary learning was started, it was... It was uh, having a certain constant. It was more static in nature. But right now, if you talk about it's more dynamic, more real time. Mm. So when you talk about real time, I think real time is something which is very important and need to be understand because... Real time assessment yeah. is very yes, much yes, uh, yes. essential these days, which was very dif very difficult in just in uh, breaker mm. motor system. Yes. So mm. if technology has really played a vital role in making real time... Uh, assessment uh, success. Look, in the beginning stage, what, what happened that uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the, the data or when we talk about the information, it was restricted to only certain things. But now when you talk about real time, you know what exactly, you know, the feeling the learners have, what exactly the taste the learners have. So on the basis of that, you know, the curriculum is going to be designed or reframed or, or you know, retwist. So these are the flexibility. So the genesis behind this using the technology in academia or in the uh, higher education is that the more flexibility need to be given right. and flexibility is something which can be of different kind it's not like that uh, uh, as far as the time is concerned cost is also something which is which is very important aspect mm -hmm. and you have seen that what you have talked about you know the open platform the open er open educational resources these have given birth to you know um, uh, float the learning in a in a in a massive manner so Sky massive, is the limit yes, if we ask yes. for any information Massive open online yeah. course where MOOC, which was initiated by, by MIT or by, you know, the various uh, institutions. And now uh, IGNU is also, you know, working in this direction. We are the national coordinators of SOEM and SOEM Prabha. And you see that how the SOEM courses are, are uh, aligned with the, with the learners and, 
and crossing the right, right. you know jurisdictions of so the there are many uh, digital teaching learning mm-hmm. technologies yes. are available uh, uh, some of them we will try to uh, right. focus today the very basic thing is when we digitalize any uh, teaching learning process we have to uh, work on a learning management system what is learning management system it is it it is a platform where we can uh, store our course materials our activities our videos our modules the all the online programs the, let it be swam or let it be igno online programs or the one we you are enrolled now in the nep pdp program has all these things like you so, have so it's a, uh, the it's way we are disseminating it through the learning management learning system. management system. system so starting from taking the admission then assessment and then examination Pro- examination could be in a proctored mode right so you whatever we are now interacting is based on a learning management system and then there are different technologies like synchronous technologies and asynchronous technologies what we are transacting now is through a synchronous technology where online real time we are having a discussion you can you are putting your questions and we are uh, delivering a lecture we are showing multimedia so all these things are happening real time so this is based on the synchronous technology but when you want to uh, view the today's videos in your own convenient time then that is that comes under the asynchronous mm-hmm. technology yes. so that is when you use the video you use your time your free time to watch suppose for some reason you could not watch the real time session then no problem you have the option to watch the video uh, in your um, uh, convenience uh, using the asynchronous technology and uh, i think with the ch- with the change of time you find out that both this component as far as the synchronous learning as far as asynchronous learning it will go together i think when the today world is more talking about the hybrid learning right. and the blended learning so it's not like that uh, what you have talked about that we are adhere to the face to face only or we adhere to you know the purely the contemporary way of learning because the demand is 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 changing and as as you have told that uh, sometimes what happen we are we are not in a uh, not connect with the internet so at that time whatever the materials we have in a static mode that we used to do so this is going on parallelly yeah. and on the other hand i think uh, the other way is coming up which you have talked the about the multimedia applications is another uh, digital te- teaching learning technology uh, this we have been listening since many years now it must be more than a decade where multimedia uses is uh, yes. very much in abundance it includes different audio video um, different uh, kinds of technologies where we give our lectures or we prepare uh, powerpoint presentations so we use different kinds of technology and combine them to form one uh, teaching uh, lecture or one powerpoint presentation so that that comes under the multimedia application now collaborative applications are very much in use since the pandemic yes so uh, we started uh, doing our meetings uh, we started taking our classes we started taking examinations assessment everything on a platform on a collaborative platform google uh, meet uh, google um, space uh, zoom uh, zoom uh, microsoft anything Teams, microsoft Teams, Teams, virtual applications are there, are there which uh, allow us to work collaboratively for a particular purpose so we prepare different types of uh, uh, tools using different types of technologies and use that platform to disseminate yes, knowledge and we can use and we can reuse also right. you have what you have with the example which you have quoted about the synchronous and asynchronous we have seen that when we have a virtual meeting it's more in a synchronous mode mm-hmm. but after certain time you archive it you reuse it right. so there were certain things which can be you know used for the so te- the intention of the technology is that only when we talk about it is to provide flexibility, yes, flexibility and it should be affordable and it should be conveniently available and that that actually helps to provide the inclusive education very you know? true and one more thing i think uh, now since you are going to talk about the emerging technologies and uh, you have seen that how the big data analytics are there how the data size is guy is you know is converting into a gigantic shape and that could be the reason you know the archives are multiplying in a in a day to day basis and huge number of archives are there so 
taking into consideration i think that there are certain emerging technologies which are facilitating which are working as a filter process uh, humko ye sab uh, use karne ki zarurat nahi hai but these terms are in use sooner or later we have to uh, get used to this and start uh, using but we need not use all these things for our yes. teaching learning technology nee, these but, are available nee, par kabhi abhi lagta hai ki hamare paas hame क्या पढ़ना है हमें क्या करना है और कैसे करना है देखिए टेक्नोलॉजी है जैसे आपने पहले अभी बहुत अच्छी बात कही कि कि लर्निंग uh, मतलब ऐसा नहीं है कि हर समय एवरी टाइम वी टॉक अबाउट टेक्नोलॉजी एंड देर इज़ नो सच प्रोविजन दैट ह्यूमंस आर गोइंग टू बी रिप्लेस बाय द टेक्नोलॉजी बट बट दे वर्क एज ए फैसिलिटेटर्स और कहीं कहीं आप देखेंगे कि टेक्नोलॉजी आपकी मददगार भी हो रही है कहीं कहीं हमें लगता है कि टेक्नोलॉजी हमें सपोर्ट कर रही है कि हमें क्या करना चाहिए क्योंकि हमें किस रास्ते जाना चाहिए कैसे करना चाहिए देखिए lot of verticals are coming up yeah, technology but uh, the importance is uh, we have to accept the change we have to accept the change uh, reskill ourselves then yes. unskill with the things which are not required reskill ourselves with the latest technologies so that we don't feel lost in this web yes, world right true right true so there is there is a sea of technologies available there is sea of information available just google itself provides us so much information that we feel sometime lost yes. but we have to restrict our uh, focus we have to very uh, carefully select which technology to use for our students we I need think, not uh, to use all the yes, available technologies true, i think uh, the, the the phenomena that the term which you have talked about the machine learning or you know deep learning is is working uh, or facilitating a learners in a big way aapne dekha hoga ki jaisa bhi aapne kaha ki ab bahut data bahut zyada hai kai bhi har cheez mein maan lijiye padhne mein aapke paas opportunities bahut hai there was a time when we where there were only brick and mortar institutions so learners have are restricted to study only that particular institution but now the basket is very bigger they can they can there are certain you know the open educational resources there are certain you know the courses which are freely available one can mug up those courses and they can do that so ye jo change aaya society mein aapne kahi se credit le liya academic bank of credit ki jaise mai aage bhi hamare experts ne isme baat kiya we have dedicated sessions on that और हमने देखा है कैसे क्रेडिट इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल प्ले कर रहा है कोई भी काम एकेडमिक वर्ड में किया हुआ उसको वो डेजिग्नेट हो जाता है क्रेडिट के फॉर्म में हमको ये सब चीज़ करने के लिए वी डोंट रिक्वायर टू स्पेंड एनी ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ मनी जस्ट आवर स्मार्टफोन इज इनफ टू यूज दिस टेक्नोलॉजी है ना सो पेंडेमिक हैज गिवन इज इनफ लेसन हाउ टू यूज स्मार्टली यूज आवर स्मार्टफोन टू डिराइव द अटमोस्ट आउटकम Yes. So, uh, government of India is also very much uh, active in uh, utilizing different uh, technologies for uh, higher education. There are many, many uh, freely available uh, platforms that are developed yes. by our government of India uh, in the form of audio, video, e-content, digital content. Then, accelerated hands-on learning means practice, practicals. Uh, mm-hmm. these are some of the examples mm-hmm. swayam is the uh, latest buzz in case of audio video e kind yes, content i think if you go into the backdrop you find out ki aap dekhenge ki 3000 ke aas paas courses isme aa gaye freely available freely across available all disciplines aur usme jo hai agar if you talk in in a ignu perspective i think till date 185 courses which ignu is offering mm-hmm. and good part is that ki there are varieties of institutions which are opting this particular course in their syllabi they are clubbing it so that they don't have so if the uh, suppose aap uh, chemistry ka kuch uh, chemistry ke ek teacher hai aap you are teaching and you want to show is uh, an on a mooc class to your uh, students so you can just so log in to the swayam that particular um, course and you can uh, ask your students to enroll for that particular course yes. to get additional information and that is free of uh, free of multi discipline ki baat ho rahi hai aap national education policy mein dekhiye jaisa ki aapne bataya ki point number 23 24 talks about the multi discipline jisme as there is no such rule there is no such rocket science that you can you are a science uh, 
परसुइंग स्टूडेंट्स यू कैन गो फॉर द साइंस रिलेटेड एंड आपको ये करने की भी जरूरत कुछ बनाने की भी जरूरत नहीं है इतना सारा चीज जो अवेलेबल है वी जस्ट नीड टू पिक एंड चूज एंड यूज यस तो देयर आर लॉट ऑफ इनिशिएटिव्स बाय आवर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक तो ये स्वयं है एनदर वन इज स्वयं प्रभा वर देयर आर डेडिकेटेड 32 एजुकेशनल डीटीएच चैनल्स एंड अभी भी आप जो देख रहे हैं वो स्वयं प्रभा चैनल 20 में You are able to view the program. Uh, National Digital Library is another initiative where there are multiple disciplines. Ka uh, e-contents are available. It is, it is managed by IIT Khadakpur. You can just um, create an username and uh, you can access to the National Digital Library contents. E-PG Partshala is a gateway for e-books from starting from KG till PG. where you get all the e e books e textbooks ncert books uh, available free of cost along with few videos and also exercises so the all these things you can use while you are uh, teaching in your uh, university or college uh, swad ganga is a reservoir of indian thesis like phd all the phd thesis that are submitted are being uploaded in swad ganga right. the entire content of the thesis is available in swad ganga whatever uh, whichever number of thesis are submitted are being automatically uploaded in the swad ganga e swad sindhu is a site for the e journals Now, there are many uh, interdisciplinary journals are available uh, in this site then these are very new things uh, in technology enabled learning for uh, how to do practic- practicals especially for our engineering technology science students uh, there, there is one e yantra where uh, there are uh, hands on experience for uh, doing practical classes this has really helped students during the pandemic for yes. doing the uh, online practical sessions then fosse is a free open source software for creating a, a, a real time lab kind of uh, situation which which is a open source platform you can demonstrate your lab activities using this uh, mm-hmm. platform similarly there are tu- tutorials for it applications in spoken tutorial there are virtual sla- labs where there are already web enabled experiments are posted in the uh, site so these were the uh, some of the uh, initiatives of government and social media has played a major role in all our life so uh, we in igno have used extensively the facebook twitter uh, to uh, teach during the pandemic time and it has really helped our learners to learn a lot and we we our regional centers use the whatsapp and telegram channels to get connected with all the learners to uh, notify whatever sir new things are happening so you can use at your ease any of these social media platforms while teaching for creating groups and for providing information there are there are many aspects of um, technology which can be used as per your requirement and as per your choice and there are also challenges yes so uh, everything has got a pros and cons pros and cons but uh, we have to see the glass is full half full rather than the glass is half okay. empty Wait. so uh, the main thing is government is trying to uh, establish infrastructure it is government's responsibility our institutions responsibility but as an individual it is our responsibility to upskill ourselves to yes. train ourselves to involve ourselves in different capacity building programs the way you are doing now and accept the change don't there is no need of uh, resistance because some day you have to accept the change and go with it so better we do as soon as possible the main thing is keep us up keep yourself updated with the available information technology and you use your own filtering mechanism for choosing the technology 
there will always be problems there will always be negative uh, sides of anything that we do even our personal lives have both so why to see the negativity and yes stop using the benefits so so that's how uh, technology uh, yes i think uh, there are certain questions which have come from the yeah yeah you yeah, were saying we can take that particular questions so so th- this is something which is you know changing very fast and uh, you have seen that uh, how the how the technology is 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 coming up and knocking the door and uh, we have no choice rather than to accept it to ye ek ek badi cheez hai aur aap dekhenge ki aane wale samay mein the institutions who are uh, who are going to change themselves they will established and those who are not going to change ultimately they will be out from the fray right so ye uh, is tarah ke bahut issues hain aur uh, technology ka apna dekhiye upyogita hai aur uh, apne pros and cons hai aapne jaise kaha aur aage ye chalta rahega aur hame aisa lagta hai ki uh, many things had to be come in a uh, in a coming days accordingly we have to do that 